My name is Peter, and I made a jelly. Um, the green stuff, soft and wobbly, like a jellyfish. If you took an x-ray of my arm, you would see not blood and bone, but you would see green jelly. It all started in 2015. I was in, a, in an office with about 20 people. The lines were drawn, it was fairly dark, and it was quite warm. I could remember smelling the people, actually. Everybody was looking at the image of the beamer on the wall. Um, I was presenting some software that we developed in the last couple of weeks, and this software was not like mm, PowerPoint or something like that. It was a software with tiny little icons, about four pixels wide, where you have to steer the mouse in and click on it. And just at that moment, my hand started shaking uncontrollably. And this happened about two weeks later, and about two weeks later after that. And you might be thinking, so what? But for me, it was a really, really big thing. I was terrified. Um, you have to imagine that a software development project is like a, say, a Roman galleon. You can be up on the top deck with the managers, enjoying the ocean views <coughs> and the cool breezes, but you have to be able to argue and convince and present. And if, you don't, if you're not able to present, you're down to the galley where it's hot, unhygienic, and the only thing offered on the menu is pizza. So, I turn to the source that we all love and trust. I googled my symptoms. And bam, you know, there was a diagnosis came straight back. Um, it's called imposter syndrome. Now, I don't know about you, but um, an imposter is somebody who's it's like doing a job but actually doesn't actually believe that they belong there. It's, you know, you're a phony, you're a fake. I mean, most people sort of feel like this at some time. And it didn't apply to me because it only, actually only applies to uh, high-achieving, hard-working people. And also, the idea of an imposter is great, it, but it didn't actually help me any further. So the next thing I did was to uh, go to my doctor. Now, I had a really good rapport with my doctor. He's a really great guy. He's got five Google stars. And when I say something to him personal or embarrassing, he doesn't you know, laugh. He listens and generally says something intelligent and tells me what to do. So I was thinking, maybe... Uh, when I describe the situation, um, what he would do would be to produce a nice big green pill that I could take and I would become super self-confident and focused and you know I would write that book and, and maybe start that blog or at least clean up my desk. But he said, no, you're not getting the pill. Uh, you're going to a psychotherapist. And so I said, great, now I'm a psycho. <laughs> and I thought about, uh, some time later, um, after that, I was sitting in a seat opposite a psychotherapist, and it wasn't a sofa, it, and he wasn't some kind of Sigmund Freud type, he was this young guy from Kiev, and what was special about him, he had this amazing amount of gel in his hair. I thought he must have spent hours in front of the mirror. I said to him, 
A few things. Firstly, I do not have a problem. <laughs> we are not going to talk about my family, my upbringing, <laughs> or my position in the family. And then we spent the next couple of se se sessions talking about my problems, my family, and my upbringing. <laughs> and uh, the guy from Kiev is uh, a behavioural psychologist. So behavioural psychologists are very, very pragmatic. The idea is that uh, your behaviour amplifies your problems, and so if you adjust your behaviour, you can yeah you can do something about your problems, which is a great idea. I really like it. And something else that they uh, work on is that they identify different uh, personality types that uh, create problems. And the one that was uh, relevant for me was the personality disturbance narcissist. And I thought, right, narcissist, I mean, you know, you are the narcissist, you see. <coughs> and, but a narcissist is actually something else. It's, uh, a narcissist is somebody who, right from being a baby, has been rejected by their parents and doesn't feel loved. So they grow up in this and create this perfect universe where they are perfect. And this works out really well up until they come into contact with reality. And then they become very thin-skinned and caustic. And uh, the best example of this is actually the narcissist-in-chief in the White House. Uh, he's not, um, you know, all those nasty tweets and, and nasty comments. It's not because he's a bad guy. It's just because his, his daddy didn't give him enough hugs. So, after about 20 sessions, uh, we, <coughs> part, uh, we, split, uh, we, we ended the uh, therapy, and I would say that it changed me. I mean, I became, I would say, quite different, and I mean, I probably wouldn't be standing here this evening talking about it. And the thing is that I... Well, looking back, I would say that the funniest thing is how I was so ashamed of, of going to a therapy. It's not sort of something you talk about. It's sort of like a, 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 a stigma or a, it's a t t taboo talking about it. And, well, I'm talking about it here on the stage now. And the other thing, I suppose, is that it doesn't matter what model you use, whether it's a narcissist or or imposter, or, or jelly in your hands. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you step up and maybe confront your issue. Thank you. Woo!